Whew, I am excited. And let me tell you how excited I am. This is not the first time I've recorded this video. This is actually the second time recording this video because the first time I forgot to hit the record button. So now it's blinking red right in front of me, guaranteed recording. And I'm still as excited. Even the second time walking through this, I'm still as excited because this is what we've been building up for. This is everything we've been doing. The scanning, the enumeration, even the Linux and the Python. This is all building up to this. And now we're ready to exploit. We're going to get our first shell. We're going to pop our first shell today. And I'm so excited for both of us. So what we're going to do is we're going to run Metasploit for this one. And Metasploit's a little bit automated, but that's okay. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and cover it manually. So what we're going to do is we're going to attack SMB here. And with SMB, what we're going to do is, if you don't remember, searchploit Samba 2.2. We found Samba 2.2.1a. We searched around. We went out to the interwebs. We did searchploit. And we kept seeing this trans to open show up like here and here, 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 all down here, right? Repeatedly. And it meets the criteria. Everything seems to make sense. It had that IPC anonymous connection as well. So I think, I think this is a winner. And we're gonna go ahead and give it a try. So I'm gonna copy this and we're just gonna go ahead and type in MSF console and load up Metasploit. Once Metasploit loads, we're gonna go ahead and just search for this guy and see if we can't find it. Now we know it exists because we did find that handy dandy Rapid7 website that said it did. So we're gonna search it here. And we're given four options. Now, these are all operating systems here, but we have been good enumerators and good investigators, researchers, information gatherers, etc. We could have willy-nilly just saw 139 said hey i'm going to try to find exploits against it and never looked at any other ports but that's not us we went out to port 80 we saw that it was running red hat we discovered linux on the machine so we know we're going to pick the linux module so we're going to say use one as that corresponds to this module here and then we're going to type in options and all we have to do is set a r host so remember r host stands for remote host or the victim that we're attacking. So we're going to say set our host and 192.168.57.134. And we're going to say options one more time, make sure that that actually set in there and it did. Now, one thing I like to do is type in show targets. Now there are no targets here, but as you're going to see later on in the course, there are often targets that we have to pick from. Not always is the first choice that's auto selected right for us. But in this instance, there's only one choice, so it's the right choice. So now we have two options. Both are going to do the same thing for us. We can type in run, or we can type in exploit. If we want to be cool, I want to be cool. Let's type in exploit. So we're going to run this, and it's going to start this brute force attack here, and it's going to start opening shells and closing shells. What is going on? So let's control C. If yours is doing this, go ahead and control C, interrupt this. Let's talk about what's happening. So you see it's trying this brute force attack. It's trying different different return addresses here. And finally, it lands on one that works. And it says, hey, I'm going to send this stage. This is always a good sign, by the way, sending the stage. Then it says, hey, I've got this interpreter session open because our payload has worked. And then this interpreter session closed. Reason died. That's not good. So it keeps going through over and over and over and over. And it's just dying. What is going on? Well, we've talked about this. Let's go into options again. Now, you don't see this the first time you do it, but you see it the second time because Metasploit says, hey, if your payload's not working, maybe the payload's the issue. And I'm gonna give you payload options this time around. Now we see payload options here in the middle that wasn't there before. We can see that we're running Linux x86 interpreter forward slash reverse underscore TCP what does that mean? Well, that means that we are running a staged payload. A couple other things to note while we're in here. We see L host. That is the opposite of our host. L host is us. We are the listening host. So we sit here and we have our IP address. Sometimes this auto selects correctly. Sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it did. And then we have the L port, which is 
by default, all fours. So that's fine for now, it's fine for these lessons. When you get into actually running this in the wild, all fours is probably gonna get you picked up pretty quick because this is a default interpreter port. So if some connection sees a, or some antivirus or detection software sees 4444 open up, this is gonna trigger an alarm here. But anyway, for this course, you're not gonna need to worry about it too much. Right now, we're gonna go ahead and set a payload. We're gonna say set payload. And how do we know what payload to pick? Let's just start typing out Linux and hit tab. And it auto tabs out the x86 part for us. And then let's just hit double tab. All right, now with double tab, that's great. Look at the payload options we have. We've got a bunch. Now, we've got a bunch of interpreters, but unfortunately, they're all staged payloads here. I love a good interpreter shell, and you guys will understand why as we move forward. But as of right now, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to use one. We come over to this right column here. You can see that we've got other shells as well. And we come down and finally down here, we've got a few options that are non-staged. So let's go ahead and try this shell reverse underscore TCP right here. And you can just start typing that out. And that should auto tab complete for you. Go ahead and hit enter. Hit options one more time to make sure that this actually works. You can see here that it actually picked up. And now let's go ahead and try to run this. And let's see if it happens. Fingers crossed. Hey, look at that. So we've got a shell now. And it says command shell session open five. Let's try, who am I? Root, host name, Captrix level one. We have successfully rooted this machine. Root is the commander of the system. We cannot go any deeper than this. We own this machine. Hands down, it's our machine. So congratulations. You have made it this far. This is your first rooted machine. You should be very proud. Pat yourself on the back. You're awesome. So from here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to focus on port 80 and 443 and how we can exploit those manually. And then we'll move on to some other exploitation techniques. But for now, congratulate yourself. You have your first shell. I'm very excited for you. So I'll catch you over in the next video as we start some manual exploitation.